a factory of undercover workers, and all under an umbrella of lassitude, of bored, frustrated, idle prisoners, miserably waiting for the war to end. They converted old uniforms, blankets, scrap material, anything they could lay their hands on into civilian clothes. The forgers laboriously copied passports, travel papers, work permits. They duplicated the cloth covers, even the official seals. Bits and pieces of information gleaned from every possible source were pooled in the making of maps. Resourceful carpenters fashioned the digging tools and pinched the wood to shore up the tunnel. But perhaps the most important of all were the engineers, the blokes who designed the tunnel itself. The workers were protected by an interlocking system of stooges. All materials could be concealed on a moment's warning. Dry runs got it down to a, well, a split-second basis. 25 feet below the surface was a small room at the mouth of the tunnel. OK, Charlie. Air for the diggers was supplied by a very ingenious pump. The bellows were made from kit bags ribbed with wire. The pipes which sent the air through the tunnel were put together from tin cans joined end to end. Go and have a shower. I'll take over. Up you go. Mind how you go, boys. Carefully. Right. Get moving. Just empty that sack. Don't bring up any more, boys. It's getting late. Right. Pick right. Fred. Fred. Take it easy. I'm more than that. 